Hi guys and welcome back to Hearthstone Champions League. This is Nimsh and I'm here with Aquablood. Skaka just advanced to the final and now we're going to see Pavel versus Thais. What's gonna win? Yeah, it's gonna, gonna be a great game. I mean, Skaka just clean sweep ECOP, showing world champion performance there. And now we have Europe's champion versus Pavel, which is one of the bright stars of Hearthstone, kind of in Eastern Europe. A very young guy and had spent a lot of success in his career already. So this should be a very intense match. So Kel Fuzad, aka Pavel, versus European champion, aka Thais. Yeah, I mean, we saw the cat yesterday. There is evidence he could be Kel Fuzad. Young Kel Fuzad. I like it, I like it. Um, I think he needs a nickname because his nickname is actually his name. So maybe Kel Fuzad is his name and his nickname is Pavel. You know, you know he, he's not the only player who taps into an animal to help him play his game. You know, Hoy is... Uh, Famous for having a little Pidgey on his shoulder when he plays. Pavel channels the power of the cat to win his Hearthstone games. You're right. You know what? I just realized Thais also has his name as his nickname. So, like, where are the nicknames overall? These guys are far too serious for us, I think, Nimsh. I guess, yeah. Absolutely. So, Pavel <laughs> versus Thais. No nicknames. Zoo versus Rogue. Which version of Zoo is Pavel playing? I think he was just playing the more traditional. Yep, Double Doom Guard tells me that he's playing traditional Zoo, and that's uh, two cards you don't want to find in your opening hand. Well, remember yesterday, uh, yesterday he had this good opening, and then he was uh, top decking Haunted Creepers. So I would say this is the Haunted Creeper Zoo. He has four copies of the card. <laughs> four copies? Maybe yeah, even more. Nothing. Yeah, absolutely. Like He only has spiders. But um, this matchup, uh, we discussed it a bit yesterday. We've seen it uh, yesterday as well. Uh, Rogue versus Zoo, where I think we're, uh, when the Rogue has the coin, it has a slight advantage. And when it doesn't have, have the coin, it might struggle versus Zoo. Uh, what do you think about those hands, though? Well, Double Doom Guard is a pain, but he does have things to play, at least. Uh, maybe not some of the strongest stuff. You want to start off with like Knife Jugglers, Flame Imps, get those free two bodies down, start putting some pressure. On the other hand, Ties doesn't have the coin, which is usually a big deal. Uh, but these Haunted Creepers are a bit of a nuisance until, say, a fan of Knife shows up. Yeah, I do agree. But uh, still, I think he, this turn... Do you go for backstab SI7, kill one of the spiders? And... Um, hmm. Yeah, I guess I think so. Do. Yeah, what else can you really do? Backstab the one spider, SI the, the token that comes from it, then dagger the other one. You don't want to pop up on both spiders, there's just too many one ones to deal with at this point. But the free the free free is a nice body, if just what he needs at the moment, just sewing down on the board. Absolutely. I think like the spider might be annoying, but still Tice is an okay spot. And next turn, if he gets a spell, that would be a really good turn for him. And um, now Flame Imp doesn't do much yet, so Tice still in an okay situation. Oh, Deadly Poison. Does it change anything? He will be able to kill the Flame Imp if he goes for pre uh, Violet Teacher Prep Deadly Poison. Generate some 1-1s one -ones as well, which is never a bad thing. You mean you want those minions down on board because the way Zoo's going to win this is through board interaction. So the more creatures you can uh, develop, the better off you're going to be. Absolutely. And um, normally I would be afraid of throwing, all, uh, throwing away Deadly Poison. Uh, it's a very valuable card, especially because you can kill two creatures with it if you just uh, have a fresh weapon. But he does have the Sludge Belcher uh, in his hand, and then on turn 7, Dr. Boom. But if he doesn't use the Deep Poison this turn, I can understand that as well. Um, you know, just attacking maybe into the flame with the free free. But I think Deadly Poison is much better overall. Yeah, you generate so many uh, minions on the board, which Pavel has to deal with with just a spider. And uh, like you said, you've got a Belcher coming up, so you've got some protection for turn 5, Dr. Boom on 7. And at the moment, Pavel's board is not very strong, but his hand is quite weak as well, so he does kind of capitalize on that. Mortal Coil will be able to clear up that free one quite efficiently. He does find an Implosion, which he can't play, but maybe he can uh, find use of it next turn. Oh yeah, absolutely. And then there is also a couple of things that Tyce was able to achieve. He played around, around Defender of Argus. And uh, Zoo doesn't have much removal with regards to the cards they're running. Something like an Implosion is a removal card, but uh, it might not be effective there. Now, Tyson needs to decide if he wants to go for Lothal or Sludge Belcher. There are certain advantages to both of them. 
I quite like Sludge Belch over Lofeb at this point, because if Doomguard comes down, he's not going to have enough power on board to clear the whole Sludge Belcher. However, Lofeb does block out Implosion, but I think Sludge Belcher overall is the better choice here, just to protect that Violet Teacher. Yeah, I agree so too. Um, on, the other, on the other hand, if you play Lothab, you do block the power of Rolming, so it will be harder to, to kill the teacher without that buff um, being available to you. But then the Doomguard, there is always a threat of, of a possible Doomguard happening. I mean, the Belcher does protect you from Implosion, because uh, he has no minions that can uh, trade in as well. Uh, he does develop quite a nice board off of this Abusive with the Implosion. Tice doesn't have the AoE he needs just yet. Uh, but maybe Azure Drake can find him something. I don't think there's anything for one mana which will help him deal with all of this board. But I think Tyz is in a pretty comfortable spot. Yeah, absolutely. Especially because uh, he has the Doctor Boom. And um, going for Lothab to maybe block any other implosion or... Like, do you go for Lothab because you've seen implosion? Uh, or do you go for Azure Drake? Like, you know, implosion should not be a threat, like a second one. Maybe Power Overwhelming will be a threat. Um, to you, but uh, what is better versus a possible Doomguard? Or, uh, I would say Lofeb. Okay. Just thinking about it, you get the 5-5 five, five body, so you get two extra stats, uh, you block out a power of overwhelming, or potentially another implosion, and you know what you're going to play next turn. You're going to play Dr. Boom next turn at this point with what you've got in your hand, so fishing for another card may not uh, be necessary at this point, if, especially if you're just going to slam Boom next turn. All right, so um, two good targets for Tais. Uh, he has a 5-5, five, five, he has a 3-4. And then Pavel, if he decides to play Doomguard, and that is the moment where he has to do it, um, he will be able to clear, well, actually everything, right? Yeah, he'll be able to clear everything on board. Uh, he does potentially discard his other Doomguard. Yep, it goes, Implosion does stay in hand, though, which is a little bit better than Diabolf Alpha at the moment. And he has a full board clear here, so not letting uh, anything be oiled, which is always a good thing against these rogue decks. If this deck is even running oil, I don't remember seeing it from Tice. Uh, this could be the more mid rangey version of oil rogue. Um, well, rogue in general, I guess. I think when there, when we see Viol all right, so Violet Teacher can actually play in both, but um, I would assume this is oil. We would see Pil Tomb Pillager already, probably, if this would not be an oil rogue. And I think yesterday he was actually playing oil. Yeah, actually he did play Deadly oil. Deadly into um, oil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's got Dr. Boom, which is kind of an inclusion that's been made recently, I find, with these rogues. He kind of, Dr. Boom kind of goes into rogue, gets out of rogue, gets back into rogue. He kind of just bounces in and out, uh, I find. He never consistently stays in the deck. Absolutely. It's just a um, personal preference card. But now Pavel has a couple of options. How much damage does he have overall? 6 uh, plus uh, 6, 12, plus 2, is 14 damage. So that's a lot of damage, and um, you, you have to make a decision. Do you continue trading because your minions can be killed pretty easily? Or do you maybe hope the rogue doesn't have anything specific and will be forced to trade into your minions? I think trading's fine at this point. Uh, I guess he can clear the boom bots first. I think he's... Oh. All right, yeah. I don't know. Do you even need to? If you're going to implosion, uh, you're going to make so many 1-1s. One and maybe clear one boom bot so he can't run two boom bots into the Doom Guard. And then you can just leave this one up if he wants. That's really good for Pavel. Uh, well executed. There is still no AoE, but a simple Azure Drake into Fun of Knives would be pretty good. Uh, that's not fun, though. Yeah, that would have been brutal. Just find another Drake, <laughs> yeah. but you can eviscerate the Doom Guard at least, slow things down for Pavel. But Pavel does have some uh, reasonable responses. He can Argus his egg up and a one one. Uh, what else does he find? An Imp Gang boss. That's another another strong draw. Oh, Pio is nice to deal with the Drake. Um, what will be the best play? So Pio and Nerubian egg Imp Gang boss. That's not bad. Yeah, that seems pretty good. I mean, you're not under threat from any minions at this point, so there's no rush to get the Argus down. And then you can potentially Argus the Imp Gang boss and the Egg, so find an, an extra, like a better target instead of just a 1-1 one, one going forward. So things are looking pretty good for Pavel at this point. 
There is a Flurry though, does it change anything? Actually, Pavel played uh, one of the most annoying minions uh, with regards to what you can uh, what you can do. Okay, mm -hmm. this is this is awkward. Uh, you can sap one of the targets, maybe, and then weapon up. Or do you want to, to Flurry this turn? I think right. sap's fine. Uh, you sap, you kill one of the one ones, you leave two power on board. Demand something else from Pavel, an abusive, an Argus, to, uh, to clear this Drake. And uh, if the Drake sticks around, you know, he's got uh, the spell power buff. He has some uh, pretty nice things going to the next gen. If he finds maybe a deadly poison, you may be able to clear up everything. But Direwolf Alpha is a, a brilliant pickup for him. Yeah, it's really good. But there is some good news for Tys though. He knows double Doomguard is out and one power of Whelming is out and double Implosion is out. So mostly no no more spells for Pavel. Pavel will just have to use the minions to honestly slay Thais with minion attacks. Uh, but uh, obviously for now Thais is a bit behind uh, with what's on board. Do you pop the egg open? I don't think you do. I think the egg offers a bit of insurance against stuff like Blade Flurry. At this point, um, Blade Flurry would need a, a weapon buff as well. So you might actually, considering that you don't have that many buffs in your in your deck, uh, just try to have this fast push and kill the rogue before he draws the cards and locks you. Okay. Did he go for the trade? Yeah. So he's just going for the four four. Oh, there is a Tomb Pillager. Uh, that's not gonna be enough, unfortunately. What can Tice do here? He can <laughs> Blade Flurry to kill a one one. Uh, so, uh, if he uses backstab on a 2-2, he's still getting a lot of damage. Yeah, Blade Flurry is, use is basically useless. Um, so, two pillager and backstab the, the dire wolf. And he's taking how much damage? 4, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, just 2 damage. Something like an abusive or dark, dark iron dwarf will finish the at the second defender of Argus. And that's a blank, I believe. That's a blank as well. So Tyus is alive for one more turn, maybe a sprint into a couple of preps will uh, get him back into the game. But right now, things are looking pretty bleak. Oh wow, Tyus, so... was that enough? Actually, was oh, the dagger that... finished him yeah, off. Yeah, the dagger actually finished him. I think, I thought he was too off, but uh, that was enough. So Pavel uh, kn knows how to count, not like us. <laughs> 29 for sure, right? Yeah. <laughs> that was a good knife, if you look yeah. at it. Knife Juggler can be a big impact on deciding if you kill someone or if you win the board. Uh, it has a it has a lot of power that card, and a very there's been so many opportunity uh, sorry so many situations in Hearthstone I've seen where a knife juggler can decide the game. Absolutely. That's how much impact it has. I, I know where I miscounted by the way. I miscounted the uh, Imp Gang boss having uh, back to, being back to two attack after the wolf died. Where it was actually buffed with Defender Vargas and having free attack. So. Sorry for not being excited there <laughs> for that knife juggle. It's fine, honestly. So, going into game number two here, Pavel has a 1 0 lead. He's going to start off with his Druid against the Rogue again. So, uh, another one of those kind of interesting matchups. Uh, Titus is on the coin this time, so he does have a slight edge. Yeah, absolutely. And um, this is an another matchup where the coin, again, is really important for the Rogue uh, to have this slight advantage. And uh, we talked about this a bit, but the Rogue players, they say this is an okay matchup for the Rogue, and the Druid players say this is an okay matchup for the Druid, which means this is probably just a 50-50. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, Tyus, look, if you look at his hand, he has a coin into SI if he needs to uh, deal with an Aspirant. Probably won't see one from uh, Pavel. Uh, they're not very popular at the moment. Uh, he does have that prep into sprints. Finds the second sprint though. That's a little bit clunky. Yeah, Tyus wasn't happy about that. Um, you can see his face being concerned a bit. And for Pavel, let's uh, evaluate that. So a shade of Naxxramas is okay versus Rogue early because it can uh, grow to like something like a five-five and not being uh, killable by an AOE. Then he's missing that piloted, sh piloted shredder. But he has a play on turn 4 anyway, and an innervated Ancient of Lore on, on 5 will be really nice. I think we're going to see a coin prep sprint from Tice at this point, just to find some minions. I mean, the SI is good, but you kind of want to get something out of him from his, uh, from his combo effect. Here he might find a Teacher, he might find a Shredder, or a Tomb Pillager, depending on what he's running. Uh, but he just finds a bunch of spells again, 
and uh, none of them are going to be able to do much at this point. Yeah, Pavel, he, he gets another Keeper of the Grove, so he knows that uh, if he needs to silence, he has it, and uh, recognizes that he needs to develop the boards um, a bit with a second minion, just pushing the damage to get the Rogue as fast as possible to 14 to be able to, to catch the Rogue off guard um, before the Rogue wins the board and seals the game. Yeah, another spell fine to tice his hand here. He doesn't have the minions he needs to contest this. He might just have to expend some spells. This is not a bad play, actually, because you get a body down. You deal with the 2-4, at least, and now you've got something on board that can do some work. But, yeah, lots of spells for ties at this point. An innovate key Ancient of Law can come down now. If Pavel chooses, draw and maybe close to that combo, or maybe some more deadlier minions. Is there any merit in Living Roots Keeper of the Grove the free free? Hmm. No, probably Ancient of Lore is, is is better. Just putting a big five five on board that's uh, not easily killed by well, it can be killed by both uh, both minion and weapon attack, but it still is five damage to face. So you ask your opponent, do you have a backstab? And you get uh, better draws, quality draws, especially because Tice did cast the sprint. So Tice at the moment having a full hand, you would expect Tice having like really good solid turns from the rogue. Hmm, yeah, I, I don't think there's... You could go for the Keeper, Living Roots play, uh, and then just kind of try to make Tice waste some of his removal on that 2-4, maybe an Eviscerate, uh, maybe a Backstab to protect the 5-5, five five, but uh, it just seems like a golden opportunity to do this. But Pavel just goes for the Wild Growth into the Living Roots clear, and now he's probably hoping that that Innovate can get more value later, and perhaps potentially with the combo. Yeah, that, that was, I think, the best play, actually, from Pavel. Um, you always want to keep keep clearing the minions from Rogue, and he was able to keep the Keeper. But <laughs> there was this one funny play where he could just innervate Force and Living Roots face, Force face, attack face with the Shade to assert dominance. Yeah, just so ties that he's all business. <laughs> he's not messing around. He's just going to take you down. 12 to face, just like that. What can ties do here? Um... This is kind of a tough turn. He doesn't have anything to activate the backstab to potentially like eviscerate into a big Van Cleef. Uh, Pavel, doing this line of play, hasn't offered a board for Tice to interact with with his spells yeah. in order to develop anything like a Van Cleef. Uh, so now he has to just drop the Falnos and the Van Cleef, making a 4-4 instead of potentially a 6-6, which is a lot better because it plays around Big Game Hunter and it's just a nice body. He, he could potentially backstab the Falnus to, to be able to um, have a 6-6 six, six Van Cleef, but it will, it will probably be a waste, especially because backstab would be so good uh, as combined with Viscerate um, into a Druid of the Claw or whatever is being played. But now for Pavel, um, do you just go for Lore? Yeah, yeah, Lore is uh, absolutely fine here, drawing the cards. He had that Pilot to Shredder possibility with uh, Innervate and Keeper of the Grove, but it wouldn't do much, and uh, you do need to get rid of the spell damage. Yeah, you never want to leave Falnos alive. I mean, leaving the Van Cleef can be a bit problematic as well, especially if Ty's had like uh, a Prep and a Tinkers and a Blade Flurry, for example, but he, Pavel doesn't want to leave it up. He reveals the shade, clearing up the Van Cleef, and just keeping that board clear, keeping dominance on the board, which is what the Druid wants to do. You never want to give these rogues uh, a minion on board, just in case a big Tinker's play comes out. Yeah, but this opens uh, an opportunity for Tice to just fun out Knives and Eviscerate to clear the board. Uh, can he somehow develop anything here also? Like, play anything else, like a minion? Not really. Uh, no, I think you just need to clear at this point. Uh, you could have maybe found a prep, but then a prep wouldn't do much either because you don't have a minion to go with it. Uh, next turn, he has Dr. Boom, but Pavel also has Dr. Boom as well, so yeah. He gets a drop Boom first, which is a lot stronger. Absolutely, and then sapping Dr. Boom is, is never fun. <laughs> you you want to kill it if possible, but is it is it possible to kill it and play something big uh, on your side? Like, can you... You cannot basically play your own boom into boom fully, like you will have to at least kill the bombs because the threat of a savage roar is looming all the time. He can kill the bombs though, uh, with back some weapon attack, but he goes for Azure Drake and a kill instead. Mm, yep, yeah, Azure Drake. Uh, it's a clean way to deal with it. 
Backstabbing and... this raid would be nice, yeah. Yeah, you just don't want to leave. You just don't want to leave it up. <laughs> don't leave the boom up. It's uh, too much of a threat at this point. But the druids kind of get into its stride now, where it just keeps dropping stuff, and Tice has to play reactively. But the thing Tice does have to his advantage is he does have kind of the cards he needs to uh, keep Pavel at bay at least a little bit. And maybe if he finds a blade flurry in the next few draws, Tice might be able to do a, a massive swing turn from there. Yeah, I mean, uh, he still has a sap, so on turn 9, if he's able to sap a big minion and play his own Dr. Boom, that will be the turn he needs. But for now, he's absolutely behind, and Tyz is shaking his head. That bomb was really good for Pavel. Do Azure Drakes ever survive boom bots? Um, I, not that I know of. Like, they mostly die. It seems like it's like uh, catching the ball game with the dog. You, you catch the bomb, you like throw the bomb in the air, and then Azure Drake is like, Oh, I will catch it, I will catch it, and they, they catch it and explode. And it always clears them. I very rarely see Azure Drake live through any kind of Boombot interaction. It's just got like a big crosshair on his head, which Boombot's just attracted to. Absolutely. Probably because they shine so much. Yeah, look at him. He's so sparkly. And the Boombot's like, ooh, <laughs> sparkles. Is, is Shiny stuff. Yeah. Target practice for Boombots. <laughs> So what do you do here? Um, you can slam Slash Belcher. Oh, there is a preparation, actually. So now he can slam Dr. Boom and uh, prep Sap. But does it save him? Does it solve this problematic board? I mean, he could prep Fan, clear the Drake with a weapon, and then play Dr. Boom. He just leaves the pile to Treader up. I think that's what he's going to go for. Yeah, that's not bad because it deals with the bomb as well. Uh, and Pilot Shredder itself does not contest Dr. Boom. Oh, that's, that's even better. I think the Violet Teacher pickup was great there because now he can play Sap, generate a token. Did he miss the attack? Wait, he hit the wrong one with the Sap, right? Or is he double sapping? Wow. Yeah, he's, he's double sapping. Um, but probably attacking this as a Drake was better, so he probably messed that one up. Like he thought after the after the fact that he could have actually attacked into the Azure Drake instead of sapping it. Although if he did attack into the Azure Drake, he would have run into Force and Nature Double Savage Row. So that's something you should really play around all the time. It's not very <laughs> yeah. really, I say it's not very common, but I see it more than I'd like to. <laughs> it did happen at uh, NA Prelims, right? At some point. I think. Oh yeah, uh, it happens. It happens a lot more than I think anyone would like to see in this game. But uh, yeah, I, I maybe that's potentially why he went for the double sap here. But he gets a nice clear with that flurry. The two three does stay up, but being able to play Doctor Boom just into a two three uh, does make things uh, good for Tice. This is the, the moment Tice has finally got the board back. Pavel's kind of had dominance all up until this point. Yeah, he's uh, Tice is actually slowly coming back and uh, with the sludge belcher he'll be able to block some damage in the future turns um pinkers offers a lot of burst as well and uh, now pavel cannot just easily go for phase because he doesn't even have the second part of the combo so he needs to fish for that and uh, and find a way to actually deal with some part of this board at least no big game hunter either yeah it's super so, annoying for the druid yeah that was a that was a tough break so now sprint is available to him Two eviscerates have been used, right? Um, yeah, yeah, both eviscerates have been used. I'm just thinking if there is a room to, to tinker this turn. Um, but you do want to play Sludge Belcher, so maybe not necessarily. The bombs can be amazing, overall. Do you backstab maybe the 4-6 first before you start sending bombs into it? I would think maybe about attacking into the 4-6 with Dr. Boom and then backstabbing the 4-4 and trying to attack the first bomb into 2-2, two, two, or, or the, the first bomb into the 4-2, and try to snipe the 2-2, two, two, and the second bomb into the 4-2 as well. Well, SI is a good pickup here to go with that sprint on 10 mana. Like you said, he can clear the 4-6 with the Dr. Boom, backstab the 4-4. Four, four. He has a guaranteed clear on that Drake now from the SI, and... Oh! <laughs> wow, it didn't clear the Azure Drake, but you can still clear it, Tyce. I know you. I know a little bit disappointed, but at least you have the clear. Yeah, it doesn't even finish it off. Yeah, he was so mad about it. Yeah, it's, it's, it was unfortunate, but it wasn't like completely devastating. He still gets to clear off at least. He is stressed. Like this is the the quarterfinals match. If he wins this, he will be guaranteed three thousand five hundred dollars, and he will fight for the five thousand in the final. Uh, we actually has, have a really good prize pool of $10,000 overall. 
So I think he also wants to win. You know, this is um, a match versus Pavel, very a good opponent. So Thais is determined. Uh, so is Pavel. Like Pavel is not showing that many emotions, but uh, I'm sure Pavel also really. Uh, he's super focused in this game and really wants to win. I mean, this will be Pavel's first major if he does go to the grand finals and beat Oskaka. A big moment for his Houston career, but it's also big for Tice as well because he's he won the Curse Trials and then to win this event shortly after, it just kind of tells the walls. Yeah, I'm still winning tournaments, guys. It's 2016. I'm just getting started. Absolutely. So can Pavel actually find the Savage Roar somewhere <laughs> in the future? How much damage is there for Tice, by the way? Um. Not enough to kill at this point, especially without a blade flurry. I think the swipe, uh, the innovate was a great pick up there. Uh, a big game hunter would have been probably the next best thing or the best thing, but now Tice has used a lot of his spells from the start of the game because he was very kind of like a spell heavy hand, and now he's fallen into his minions. Uh, this kind of might actually play into Tice's favor now because now the board is more even. He's got guaranteed minions that he can just drop back to back. And that might be what he needs to leverage the board, board overall. Yeah. I'm just looking at Lothab and Sludge Belcher. Uh, which means that Sludge Belcher will uh, stop Engine of Lore and deal free damage to it. And then you can finish it off with SI7. Like this turn you can even go SI7 to face. And uh, Lothab will stop any weird spells that can happen. And after that you will have a, a pretty nice board. Um, you might even go for Tomb Pillager instead. Yeah, because it's like more power overall. And, you know, the Sludge Belcher, um, sorry, the low feb's going to block out the spells, which is what you're worried about as far as damage is concerned. And the Sludge Belcher might have, uh, is another defensive tool that you can use. So, uh, although it's, it seemed very nice to play them back to back, I think, like, spreading them out, using low feb as one defensive tool, then Sludge Belcher on another turn, is probably the best way you can stick it, stay, stay around and not get taken out by, say, a Savage Roar combo. Also, this uh, sets up mm, the kill really nice. Tice doesn't have the kill yet, but if he gets something like a flurry, then maybe uh, with just Tinker landing on a correct target, he'll have plus 7, 10, 15 damage. And uh, flurry, if there is no armor up, no, no, no shapeshift, can actually finish the game, I think. I think Pavel needs to consider now can Tice kill him next turn uh, with a good uh, Tinker's combo? Uh, Lofeb might be a play here, to a defensive play, just to lock Tice out of those spells. Uh, he does go for it, and now he needs to decide what he wants to trade with. He might trade into the 3-2 for value. Uh, no, Although... I think you need to... Oh, actually, you're right, uh, because uh, he played Lofeb. But then Pavel is still wondering, where are where are my Savage Roars? <laughs> if my right cat in the actually edited my deck. And a blade flurry is a great pickup for Tice there, uh, if the low feb hadn't come down. So, you know, being able to Pavel playing that low feb defensively, I think pays off a little bit, at least because he's not going to lose his whole board to uh, a giant Tinker's combo. However, Tice does have a lot of minions to play this turn. Yeah, are you concerned about the combo next turn? Uh, you play Sludge Belcher, so you shouldn't be that concerned, but I think you still have to kill the 5-5. Five five. And then if you play Belcher, you have uh, five mana open. You might just slam Violet Teacher. Um, or maybe weapon up. Like, the problem with Violet Teacher is that it can actually summon a 1-1 one -one that will get uh, the Tinker buff. But still, it's like the the biggest minion on the board. All right, Farseer is uh, a bit better there. I was looking at Sludge Belcher, Violet Teacher, Coin Weapon. Uh, and uh, an extra five. token. Oh, yes. Low feb. He'd been cleared. He'd gone out of sight. I'd forgotten about him. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that coin will uh, come in handy, though. Especially as a combo activator for that Tinkers. And now Pavel clears the board again. And there is still no Savage Roar for him. And uh, Rogue is at 21. It's, it's really close. It's really close. I wonder if... Because the Violet Teacher is the last minion in Tyus's hand. That would be so funny, it's just Pavel, Pavel goes for a different plan. He says, you know what, I don't have Savage Roar, and I don't need Savage Roar. I would just kill all the minions he plays, ever. He's almost out of cards. Drake and Teacher may potentially be his last minions in his deck. And if Pavel clears them, 
how does how does Tice win this? You're right. Uh, he has some damage potential with that deadly poison and tinker, but this, if there is what what can he even draw? Like swipe can clear this board, swipe and force. Um, what else is there? Savager, obviously. Oh man, he got that Savager. So Pavel probably recognizes this and he will just clear the minions and be like, all right, Thais, what do you have? What are the last cards in your hand? And you're taking damage at the very moment. That was actually an amazing game for Pavel. Yeah, it was very close. I mean, Thais had an opportunity to come back. Uh, Pavel changing his game plan. He was waiting for Savager and recognizes that Thais is probably our minions at this point and just kind of grinding them out in the minion game. And I've seen druids do this to patron as well. Just kind of grind out their minions, they won't have any minions left, and then the druid just does what he wants. Uh, Tice will stay in the game. Uh, he may be able to find a lethal if Pavel doesn't finish him in the next... How many turns does he need to uh, win this game? He has 12 damage burst in hand, right? So he needs to get Pavel to 12. That, that's what he needs. The, the moment he gets Pavel to 12, he will win. But then if Pavel keeps shape shifting, he'll never get there. Yeah, exactly. And Pavel uh, and Pavel will play minions that will deal damage. I think that's going to be it then. As long as Pavel keeps uh, shape shifting, there's not much more he can do at this point. Such an excellent game. Um, I, I think I haven't seen a game like that from the Druid. It's like, Pavel played this Druid game because he didn't get a Savager and an opportunity to kill uh, earlier. Uh, he put Thais in a position where he, he just had like game like versus Warrior. And then he just throws all the damage at him. And you're going to heal a power once again just to keep him out of range. And this should be the Thais' last turn. Yeah, and Tice has uh, 6 damage only, uh, there is a shapeshift obviously, not enough, and uh, taking 3 damage from Fatigue. And that would be it for that game, which was pretty good, unless there is something from Shredder. <laughs> not really. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the Vitality Totem's not going to make a difference this time. <laughs> Pavel is careful that, I'm telling you. Pavel is taking a 2-0 lead over Tice at this moment. Uh, very strong play from both players. I mean, Tice had a very spell-heavy hand going into that first uh, in the, at the start of that game. Uh, he did pick up the minions later, and like you said, Pavel kind of changed his game plan. He's like, "I'm not drawing Savage Draw. I'll just grind him out uh, into fatigue," and it worked out. It's not very often you see Druid that uh, do that, but Pavel, you know, having the experience and having the skills to to recognize that game plan will get him a win. Yeah, this only shows the depth of Hearthstone overall as a game and the skill of those players where it's not, it's not that just minion trading, it's uh, understanding the strategy of the matchup. And now Pavel is left with his last deck, which is uh, Freeze Mage, and Thais is uh, taking the Druid instead. Uh, he wants to start with a good matchup for, for himself. Yeah, just try and get that win with the Druid. A, this is one of the good matchups for uh, the Druid. He does find low feb as well, which is kind of a key component in beating these freeze mages although it's not unwinnable for freeze mage uh, freeze mage can still find a win but low feb is going to make things a lot more difficult so let's evaluate the hands for pavel he was um looking for mad scientist acolyte of pain maybe maybe arcane intellect uh something to draw cards he did get a lot of burst instead so... yeah he's finding the burst when he doesn't need it you really want to find like you said loot hoarders mad scientists um, just to be able to contest the early pressure but Thais doesn't put on too much pressure at this point although Innovate Ancient of Law or Innovate Doctor Boom is gonna be a uh, pretty devastating for Pavel but he does have coin frost Nova Doomsayer so he does have a response to that yeah and probably Thais recognizes that as well that it's possible to actually deal with that uh... Dr. Boom, that's why he's going for the cards. He even gets the very important Keeper of the Grove that will be able to silence the Doomsayer. And uh, I believe that this turn might not be the Doomsayer turn yet. But still, Thais already has an answer. And that's why Druid is so good versus Freeze Mage. Because first, you have the Keepers for Doomsayers. 
Second, you have the Shapeshift that gives you armor, which uh, makes it awkward for Mage to finish you after Alexstrasza, because instead of 15, you, you mostly have 18 or even more health. And then the third thing is the combo, which obviously is good for in any matchup, but specifically versus Freeze Mage, you have those hidden opportunities to pop the Ice Block when the Mage really wants to keep it uh, alive. And the utility of the other cards, like Ancient of Law, can draw you cards uh, to speed up your, your tempo, speed up things on the board. But only uh, you can also heal with it as well if you don't if you draw a bit later and you need to kind of sustain. Uh, the heal can come down. Drew to the claw can charge as well, so you don't have to play it as a defensive minion. You can play it as a more aggressive minion, and that's again all these things kind of combined, especially with low fab as well. Just makes this matchup so good for the Druid. Absolutely. And uh, Pavel decides to go for the Nova Doomsayer, not only because it deals with the board as it is right now, but also it would normally stop at turn 6. But there is the key another Keeper of the Grove and a, a very smart move to just play the one you draw into. This shows, hey, I top decked. I didn't have it. And maybe can actually irritate Pavel. And then you kind of hide uh, that you've had a Keeper all along as well. Which is always a good thing. So now Pavel might think, okay, he topped dead that keeper, he had an answer then. If I have to go for another Doomsayer Frost Nova turn, he probably doesn't have the other one. So yeah, choosing which card you play from your hand can also uh, be very important in kind of layering mind games with your opponent. If there is a Savage Roar, how much damage is that? Too much. So Pavel decides for um, that Frostbolt to stop the damage this turn at least, and then he actually has Blizzard into Flame Strike for the next couple of turns. Do you Doctor Boom here, or do you just Shredder, or maybe take it slow? Mm, I would not hate Shredder actually. Lothep to protect your board is smart. You can attack off with the Shade then if you drop Lothep. If you drop anything else in Lothep, you might just yeah, yeah absolutely attack with the Shade. But if you drop anything else in Lothep. You give your opponent a chance to freeze your board, but then you might slam off up next turn after that to block the, the flame strike and get even more damage in. But I think Lothab here is absolutely fine. The one advantage of playing Lothab here as well is that Pavel doesn't have any secrets down. So he doesn't have an, an ice block, he doesn't have an ice barrier at this point. He finds an ice block to his hand there, can't play it because of Lothab, and forced to use his entire turn Ice Lance in. So now a tremendous amount of damage could have come from Tys with a Savage Roar, potentially. Also uh, a really good Iceland's target. You cannot really unsilence this shade to be able to attack with it. That's true. Unless you really want that two damage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, by the way, Lothab was uh, protecting Ancient of Lore from being killed by Blizzard. So maybe that Ancient of Lore turn... Well, certainly that Ancient of Lore... Um, that Lothab turn was the best where Tys played it. A Savage Roar would have been beautiful there. Unfortunately, yeah. Tice doesn't have it. Sure, already on Pavel. No ice block down. Gonna have to go for the blizzard here to try and uh, just try. And... Uh, we do have a silence and a swipe from Tice next turn, so that's, that's gonna be. It's off attack for five and then swipe for the kill. Stir uh, the mage. Uh, it's just kind of relentless pressure and utility which the, the Freeze Mage can't deal with. It's the, the easy match is out the way. And he has the Reno Lock as well. Yeah, so I think Rogue is um, in favor of Freeze Mage. Uh, the question is Reno Lock. How good Reno Lock is versus Freeze Mage? And uh, I think... Freeze Mage. Although I remember Tice actually posting this Twitter once saying that he was enjoying farming Reno locks with Freeze Mage on ladder. Oh, really? So maybe he knows as well because he understands the weaknesses and understands how he wins. So um, I think that matchup might be a bit more even just based. And that, that's probably also why he picked Rogue instead. He wants to go with the better matchup in his mind uh, versus that Freeze Mage instead of the Reno Lock, which he feels is, is a bit weaker. So yeah, this Rogue may be able to snag a win here and tie the series up, uh, but 
needs. He has that 2 1 to draw him a card. He has an arcane intellect. The Maybe another arcane intellect. Uh, he'll have a better time than he did against the druid, where he kind of, kind of, kind of withdraws. Uh, no, no early start, which is really uh, problematic for freeze mage. Yeah, but on the other hand, hoarder without taking any damage and already ha has a minion on board, then he can play another SA7 just to have some pressure. Oh, there's Mad Scientist for Pavel. That's not a nice card. Not on this turn, I. Oh, Doomsayer. Um, Preemptive Doomsayer, makes sense, yeah. Yeah, just try to lock out the next turn. The how ties that... I mean, how do you even kill it, right? It'd be, be tough for Rogue to deal with it on this turn. Uh, they need, like, a prep with something uh, to go with it. Uh, just because of the fan. Fan doesn't really have a lot of impact in this match. Just cycle the fan, squeeze and free damage. Scientist ping. Or potentially mad scientist, mad scientist, if he draws another one. But oh, he goes for the intellect. Actually, intellect's probably better because you've got a clear board. Damage at that point. <laughs> Has an awkward turn, which he can just slam SA7 without combo. It's like, alright, I'll just play my Vanilla free free. I will try to pressure you with it. And now, scientist does come down. So he's going to get himself an ice barrier. When that sign just goes down, uh, Finna's deck. This for Tice already, uh, because Pavel has uh, till Alex Straza, and then after Alex Straza, he has two fireballs, which doesn't assert in the win yet. It's only 12 damage, but he's seen the whole, whole rogue deck on a card. Was one card he missed, or, or have you? No, seen? I think he played everything. Tice has revealed the entire deck. All right, so he knows there is no heal bot. The only thing that might be threatening a bit will be Lothab. One more removal card, he will be um, just set for the win. It just needs a frostbolt at this point uh, to finish him off. No healing from Tice, apart from that fast here. I think there was one fast. Oh, that's just not. That's not a lot of healing now. It, it is some. Things. It can actually save you, uh, but not against the pyroblast. So uh, yeah. And uh, if an ice block stays, then you can have um, double fireball and then pyroblast. Pavel, right now, like you said, he's coming. the next ice barrier that comes from that mad scientist uh, he needs about four or five turns and with all that freeze like you said he's gonna have him it's gonna be a, a very tough game for Tice to win with a hand like that so uh, what Tice needs to do he needs to pop the block on Alex Straza turn uh, and then hope that Pavel doesn't have that frostbolt to kill him or even like Straza to force an, a second ice block, or just to force something, uh, force a reaction, and then he can still find a small window of opportunity to kill Pavel between Alex Straza and a certain. Be very hard. Tyson's gonna have to deal what 34 damage in one turn if he doesn't do any damage this turn. Uh, yeah, uh, basically. <laughs> I'd, I don't know. Big uh, Edwin, maybe. A big Edwin would be great. Uh, it put a lot of pressure down. Uh, he looks like he's gonna go for a pillager. What could you prep with? Deadly poison. Okay, so he's setting up. Isis is way too slow. Yeah. Uh, he needed to do damage this turn and then pop the block next turn, like you said. Block. And his next turn, but I don't think he can, not without dealing with Alex at the same time. You're right. Um, well, he can sap Alex, right? But then, if you pop the block... And he really needed that Lothab on this turn to be able to at least block the spells. Uh, if he doesn't play Lothab... And then he'll be in range for a Fireball. Even if Lothab comes down after that have to be Lothab and Farseer, 
which uh, he doesn't have in hand at the moment. Not knowing that you're almost dead. Uh, I think it's about 27. Potentially more than that. He gets 10, 5, 6. Be able to 27, 31. I think he has 31 damage altogether with the Eviscerate and the Blade Flurry. 17. That's 12 plus. He's dead. And Alex Strauss doesn't even matter, just Pyroblast to the face. And then Pavel wins, whatever happens. Yep, Pyroblast, gonna come down low feb, could come down next turn, but the block hasn't been popped. So uh, it, it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things, because the, the turn after low feb, he's just gonna fireball fireball. Yeah, yeah win. that's true. Pavel, so, yeah. There is no need for to play around Kazan Mystic uh, from Pavel's perspective. Like, he can make a safe play to, to do a crossbolt fireball. Fireball. Oh yeah, you can go farm this fireball here. It doesn't need to invest a pyroblast just yet. This is super safe. We know there's no way Tice can win this game at this point, but uh, there's just nothing's gonna come out and surprise him at this point. No Kesemistic. No Kesemistic. He knows there's no Kesemistic because he's seen the entire deck. But I like I like Pavel just being super safe at this point. Love the weapon attack. So he just makes sure that he will be in a good position. Like, even if there is a farce here, whatever happens, that Pyroblast is winning the game. Like, even the Fireball, just the Fireball wins. You know, just wants to win this game with Alexstrasza attack. Maybe that's his thing. That's not even a Great like, pleasure I... in Dragon Smashing Face. Finish the game like that and get to the final. Playing, I would... I would be on board of that. He would want to finish the game with a dragon. Or maybe he wants to finish the game with Thanos' attack. He is Kalthuzan indeed. Clear the uh, face and swing with the Thanos for Yes, win. exactly. <laughs> and then Tice just backstabs the Thanos and then we see the rage. Yeah, but... Uh, the... Um, like, even without the knowledge that there is something in the hand, assuming there is the mad scientist, and I don't even know what he can, he can have, but he did his best. Pyroblast finishing the game versus Tyson, advancing to the finals versus Ostakaka. Ostakaka Pavel, gonna be a grand finals. One of those guys is gonna walk away with $5,000. The other guy gonna walk away with 3,500. So, a lot of money to play for in that grand finals. I mean, $1,500 difference between first place and second place, but also kind of your accomplishments is also a big deal for these players. It's not just about the money, it's about winning events. Absolutely. And I think Pavel was actually in the final of Geico tournament. Is fighting and then trying to get that that one big major win, and especially on the back of the world champion, that will be the sweet the sweetest victory ever. But he's not there yet. He's not there yet. He still has. To... But we'll have that match after the break, and then Eco versus Tides. I'm not ex exactly sure, or is it? All right. All right. So first, the the third. Uh... For the players, and then we'll be back after a short while.